Imagine building secure authentication and instant CRUD operations in Next.js just within 10 minutes. Sounds crazy, right? Stick around, I'm gonna show you exactly how. Welcome back to Max Dev Insights. If you are tired of complex uh, backend setups or confusing authentication, this video will simplify your life. We are diving into building secure authentication and CRUD operations effortlessly using Next.js and Superbase. Ready to level up your full stack skills? Let's jump right in. But before we get started, let's talk about why Superbase and what exactly it is. Superbase is an open source Firebase alternative with a powerful OAuth and uh, real time features. It's easy, scalable, and fully open source. That will be the plan for a demo application, so we will need to create Next.js app, uh, then we need to create several components, uh, so that's gonna be a auth component, a task list and a task input. After that we need to set up a Superbase, so uh, for that we, you need to have an account in Superbase uh, to retrieve the key, so you can connect your app with the Superbase. After that we need to implement authentication and by the end we will implement CRUD operations, that's it. I have already prepared an app, it's an XJS app with the app router, so now let's take a look at the pages and components. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the app folder at first, uh, so here we will have auth uh, pages and and a dashboard in Oath we will have login and register. Let's take a look at that. So they will reuse Oath form, and in Oath form we will need to pass the type of the Oath form. So in this case it's going to be login, and in this case it's going to be register. We will take a look at the Oath form a bit later. Now let's go to the dashboard page. In the dashboard page we will render task list itself and the logout button. And as you see, I used the Tailwind CSS for styling of my components. And by the way, if you want to know more how to style your app with the Tailwind CSS, I have a video on my channel. Please take a look at that if you want to learn more about Tailwind CSS. And now let's take a look at the components. Um, and the first, let's pick Oath form since uh, we are using it in our initial stage, login and register. Let's go here. And this is the setup of Oath form. So as a prop, it receives a login or register. We already see it in uh, login and register pages. As you see, it's a pretty simple setup of Oath form. Uh, so the values of the form stored uh, here uh, using use state. So I just decided to go that way just to make it more simple and more quick. Of course, uh, you can use uh, some other libraries to handle the form state uh, to make it more scalable and advanced. But for now, I will use a uh, use state in this case. Now let's take a look at the markup. So here we have form with the two inputs, uh, email and password. And here we have button uh, where we toggle the content of this button uh, depend on the type of Oath form. So if, if it is login, we will say login and vice versa, we will say register. And also here we will handle an error. I mean, we will show the error in case if it is happened. Now let's go to logout button. So pretty simple, just one element button with a handler handle logout. Now let's proceed to the task list. In this case, I also used the use states to keep the state of this uh, task list. And here we will have a few functions, uh, fetch tasks, uh, we will have delete tasks and update tasks. So fetch task we will run on the first render just to get tasks from DB and render it in the interface. Also we will have some loading state, uh, pretty simple one. And then here in the beginning we will have task form. So it's gonna be just single input where user can um, enter the title of the task. And uh, here down below we will render this um, tasks uh, with additional buttons, which is gonna be edit and delete. And in case if user press edit, we will have save and cancel. Let's quickly take a look as well to the task form. So it will have just one input, uh, as I mentioned before, and a button to submit uh, this task. And of course we will have handler, which will handle that uh, workflow. Basically that's it for the setup of the application. So now what we need to do one very important thing is to install specific packages to work with um, Superbase. So we will need this Superbase JS and also Superbase SSR. 
and now we are ready to implement our connection with the Superbase. Now we need to go to uh, Superbase docs and here we need to go to server side rendering Next.js guide. This is a pretty clear guide how to set up a Superbase to your Next.js project. So let's go and take a look uh, step um, by step. So first you need to select here app rotor or pages rotor in case if you use this one. So here they say that first uh, we need to install this um, dependencies, the one I showed you before. So it's Superbase JS and Superbase SSR. Then we need to create .env local file and then we need to create two variables here, which is going to be Superbase URL and Superbase key so that uh, you can get uh, from Superbase once you create your account and create your project. After that we need to create Superbase client so there could be two different clients. One is a client component uh, client and server component client. So this is the explanation uh, why we need this or that one. So I have integrated both of them just uh, for example. So but client component we need to access Superbase from client components and um, server components components of course um, to access Superbase from server components, server actions or road handlers. After that we need to set up a middleware for Superbase and for that we need to create middleware.ts file and uh, put it in the root of the project. Inside this file we need to um, place this configuration for a Superbase middleware. So it can be just copied from here. So, but basically why do we need this middleware? So they will explain it here in these three steps. So we need the middleware for refreshing the OAuth tokens. Uh, we need middleware for passing the refreshed OAuth token to several components so they don't uh, attempt to refresh the same token themselves. And uh, for passing the refreshed OAuth token to the browser so it replaces the old token. After that they explain how to implement authentication but we don't need it for now so let's go back to our app and um, integrate Superbase client to our app. Here is a Superbase uh, browser client so I place it in that folder lib. Um, so here we import Superbase SSR and from this uh, library we need create browser client so we return it from create client function and we pass here superbase URL and superbase key, which we're gonna get from our .env local. Also, let's take a look to superbase uh, server. So this is the implementation of the server client. So it's actually the same as it was mentioned in the docs. And also don't forget to create that uh, middleware file. This is the setup of the middleware. So what we need now to proceed with the implementation of authentication, we need to get that Superbase URL and key and place it to um, .env local file. So now let's go back to Superbase and I will show you what you have to do to get that key and URL. First of all, you need to create an account with a Superbase. After that, you will end up at this screen at the dashboard is gonna be empty in your case. I have already created that demo project, uh, which is um, I'm gonna use for uh, our demo. Uh, so to create a new project, you need to press this button. And here you need to specify project name, uh, password, region, and your project will be created. After that, you go inside that project and there is connect button here at the header. So you need to press here. After that, you need to press that app frameworks. In that part, you need to select framework. In our case, it is Next.js with the app rotor. And as you see here, you have your um, environment variables in that field. So you can copy and paste it to your .env local file. That's it. Since this setup with the Superbase is ready, it's time to update OAuth form and hear how it looks. So we need to import a user router from Next Navigation and as well we need to import create client from Superbase browser. So here we define the router and here we define our Superbase client. So, and the main magic happens in that handle submit handler. So here depend on the type of the OAuth form, we call different methods. 
So in case if it is login, we will call Superbase client, then we call auth and then sign in with password. And here we need to pass email and password. In other case, if it is register, we just call sign up method. That's it, and it's super simple. After that, we just check if there is no error happened, uh, we redirect users to dashboard. In case if it is an error, we have to show it in our UI. That's it. As you see, super simple setup. You just need to call one method from uh, Superbase and it handles everything for you. Let's try it out. So I have already registered a user. So now I will try to log in. And by the way, when you register using um, Superbase Auth, uh, Superbase sends you an email where you have to verify your email. Otherwise, you will not be able to log in. So now let's try to log in with a user I have already created and also I open the network tab just to see how the request goes and what it returns back. Okay, let's press login. And as you see, um, request was successful. Let's take a look what Superbase returns back. So as you see, here is access token, expiry, refresh token and token type, but we didn't get redirected to dashboard because we have hard-coded value of user as a null. So let's fix that and let's wrap up the whole implementation. I have already prepared the changes, so now I will walk you through step by step and we will start with the home page. So here we import Superbase client, but the Superbase server. And from this uh, client, we will need to get um, user so basically we call Superbase auth get user and then we use that value to check if user is already authenticated so we can redirect it to dashboard or um, in case if user not uh, authenticated uh, we need to redirect user to login or register. Now let's go to the dashboard page and in dashboard page we need uh, also superbase client and we need superbase server client and here we also getting the user and then checking if um, user tries to enter to dashboard but this user is not authenticated then we redirect him to login in logout button, we also import create client from Superbase browser. And here we use uh, the Superbase client in handle logout handler. And here we call Superbase auth sign out. And then we redirect user to login page. Let's go now to the most interesting part, a task list and task form. So first of all, we need to create a task. So let's go to task form. In task form, we need to use Superbase a browser client and here we have to do changes to this handle add function. So what we are doing here. And the main point of this task form is of course to add tasks to our DB. So for that first we get um, from Superbase client auth get user. So we get user and we check in if user is authenticated and available. Also here in the beginning we set loading state to true and in case if this uh, condition fails we set it back to false then we use superbase from tasks this is going to be the table with our tasks and then we say insert title title is going to be the name of the task and also we refer to that user which we get from a get user method and we assigned a user id to the task and in case if everything was successful we set title to empty string and we call on task added callback just to refetch list for task lists and then also we set set loading state to false and that's it. So now let's go to the tasks list component. In task list, we also use Superbase a browser client. And the first thing we need to do here is fetch tasks. For that, we need to get user and check that user is valid and authenticated. And after that, we can perform the action. So for that, so we call Superbase and then we call from tasks, the same we saw in the task form. But then we say that we want to select all records which belong to this user ID and also we want to order them in ascending order. That's it. And if it was successful, we get this all tasks and set to our state. And then we set set loading 
to false. Also remember that we call that fetch tasks on the first render of the component. And besides that, we call fetch tasks once we get that callback triggered from task form. Uh, so it means when user add another task and we want to re-render the list to show this new task. And after that, we have a delete a task functionality. So for that, we call superbase from tasks and we say that we want to delete all records where ID equals to user ID, which we pass here to that function. And um, if there is no error, we refetch tasks. And finally, we have update tasks. So here we call superbase from tasks. And here we call update, where we want to update just title column. And also we have to be sure that um, this task has to have ID equal to user ID. And then if there is no error happen, we set that set it editing to null, set new title to empty string, and we refetching tasks. And that's it, but there is one thing which leads to the error. Let me explain you which one. Okay, so what is the thing? Um, for example, let's take a look at the fetch uh, tasks uh, function. So here we try to get tasks from superbase, from tasks table, and we want to get uh, tasks uh, with a specific uh, user ID. But superbase doesn't know about this table because it actually doesn't exist. So we need to create this table first to be able to operate with it. In Superbase dashboard, you need to go to this sidebar and select SQL editor. In this SQL editor, you need to run such a command. So first of all, you need to create extension in case if it doesn't exist, it's just to generate UUID for the user ID. And here we uh, specify that we need to create a table if it doesn't exist yet, and we call this table tasks. So in this table, we need to create ID, which is going to be our primary key. Then we need to create title, user ID, and create it at timestamp. And that's it. So once you run it, your table will be created and you can play with it. But there is one more thing. You will need to run this uh, SQL commands as well to do all the operations with the table. So first of all, you will need to run alter table task enable row level security. After that, you can run one by one this, so create policy, users can insert their own tasks, so it actually explains what it does. And we need to do the same for view, for update and delete to be able to perform these actions with our table. So now your table is ready, so now we can test our application. Okay, so here's the dashboard, a pretty simple one. So let's try to add some tasks. Let's try to add it. Perfect, it's here. So let's try to add one more. Perfect, so let's try to delete one. Great, and let's try to edit uh, this one. Let it be make two apps, save. Perfect, so it works as expected. And in Superbase dashboard, we can go to the table editor, select tasks, and we can see our tasks here. And that's a wrap up. It took a bit more than 10 minutes, uh, but as you see, implementation is pretty simple. So once you master Superbase, you will do it even much faster. If you enjoyed the building with me, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more dev insights, and let me know in the comments how do you like the explanation of Superbase setup, and also let me know how you're gonna use it in your project. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.